All right, guys, so today we have something different. We have three PWM charge controllers. Now, we haven't had any PWM charge controllers on the channel, and I haven't actually used one in a long, long time. Are these still a viable option? Now, they're, they're much cheaper, you know, than an MPPT. So I've got a mega cheap one. Uh, this one was bought from Depp Vico. We've got the Renji Wanderer, and we've got the Bouge RV 30 amp PWM. Now these are all claimed to be 30 amp. So this one, as you see here, says rated current 30 amps. On the Renji, it says 30 amps. And on the Bouge RV, it says 30 amps. I'm going to plug them into as much solar panel as I have on hand that will operate optimally on a 12 volt system. And then we're going to use each one to charge this Licity battery box, which inside I have a Bluetooth battery. So we can monitor uh, the actual current going in to the battery. And I've already got a cable that I've built up that we can use to connect these charge controllers in. I'm going to just use one of these 50 amp bi-directional input outputs on the Licity battery box. All right, so let's get started. All right, guys, so we're gonna start with the Renogy Wanderer. And I've got it already plugged into the battery. So we've got the lights on here showing that it's on. And let's go ahead and plug in the solar. Here we go. Now we've got a light showing PV. So we're showing 25, 28, 30 amps right there. Ooh, we went slightly over 30. So right off the bat, the Renogy Wanderer is doing slightly over its maximum. Now we'll let that charge for a minute and see if it's getting too hot or anything like that. And as far as the solar panels that we're using, these are the Bouge RV bifacials, so they pick up on both sides. We've got three of them there in parallel. Yeah, so the Wanderer is still kicking butt here, guys. 31.4 amps. And I don't feel a lot of heat coming off this thing or anything like that. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we've got the cheapest one out of the bunch. So let's just go ahead and plug that into the solar. And uh, look at that. We are getting 30 amps into the battery. Wait, no, we're dropping down. Oh man, what happened here? So we went down to zero amps. That didn't last very long. Oh, okay, we're back up. Now we're at six. You know, it came out blazing, but then it just dropped like a rock. I want to disconnect the solar from this and see if it just kind of like restarts. We'll actually disconnect the battery too and give it a chance to fully restart. Oh, it feels really hot right here. There's a there's a definite definite hot spot right here where I didn't feel that on the Renogy. So I bet this thing got hot real quick. And then it was like, nope. We're gonna have to throttle down. Alright, so let's plug the solar back in. Let's see. Alright. We're off to the races again. Oh, we started good. And now we're going back down. <laughs> womp womp. All right, so let's move on to the next one. All right, guys, so we got the Bouge RV PWM 30 amp plugged in. Now this one feels like it's got more heat sinking and it's got more weight to it than the rest of them. Um, 
the Renogy is definitely a little bit lighter and has doesn't really have a lot of fins on it, but it's still like you could like we saw earlier, it was doing great. So let's plug in the solar to this one and see what we get. Oh, 32.2. This one's going over its rated. Oh, no, we're going down. And we have an error on the screen here. I wonder what that is. All right, so I figured it out. So now we're at 30 amps. So basically what EO3 is, is that we got too much power coming from the solar panel. Um, so I had to put, I had to shade one little corner of one of the panels to limit the power out. And now we are in good shape. 30 amps. So now that begs the question, can we go back to this one and then this one work? Was that, ha was that a similar problem that we were having? But as you can see, the Bouge RV is going at 30 amps perfectly fine now. Yeah, so that's definitely the difference between using an MPPT and a PWM. You can't really over panel your system with a PWM because then you're going to exceed the capabilities of your PWM controller. You have to stay below its max. Interesting. Yeah, we're still a 30. We're still at a solid 30 amps for the Bouge RV. All right, so now that we're locked in at 30 amps, let's go ahead and throw this guy back on. All right, so we got him plugged back into the battery, and we just need to hook in the solar. There we go. Now we are back. There we go. Now we're doing 29.6. And so, oh, no, we dropped again. Let me try to shade the panels a little bit more. Okay, did a little bit more shading, but we're still at 5 amps. Let's try to restart the controller. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, we got to 14, and then now we're down to 11. Yeah, it's just, it's not. Okay, so... I'm going to take this guy out of the battle. I figure uh, he's no match for the Bouge RV and the Renogy. And so I've got the Renogy back on. And let's plug the solar back in. I want to see if it runs into any of that throttling issue. Let me take the shading off. Okay, so we got the Renogy back on, and we're doing 32.7 amps, 32.6 amps. And that is no shading whatsoever on the panels. It's got full sun. They're at the proper angle. Well, I mean, the sun's slightly, you know, at a little bit of an angle, but it's pretty much direct on. And so it's just pumping out 32.5. And it's not getting hot, it doesn't seem. It's getting a little warmer than it, than it was earlier, but nothing hot. I'm just gonna let this run for a little bit and uh, see if there's any issues over time. Okay guys, we did actually end up, after letting it run for a little while, we went down to zero amps. So it must be hitting that same wall where there's too much power coming in from the PV and it's got a throttle down. Now it's coming back up. So I think if I if I do the trick where I where I shaded one little portion here, that'll cut down our power a little bit. Well, it only got us down to 31 amps. 
Let's try to shade it just a bit more. All right, there we go. We're down to 30 amps now. So I bet at that, let's let it run and see if it stays at 30 amps or it throttles down. All right, guys, it's been a little bit and we have not throttled at all. So as long as we're staying around that 30 amps, it's all good. So I'm going to switch it back over to uh, the Bouge RV and let it run for a little bit and see how it does. All right, so we're back on the Bouge RV. Let's just plug the solar in. There we go. See the power here. Okay, so we got the 30. 0.8 amps and uh, we'll just let that run and see if it can hang all right so here we go it's been a, a little bit of time and we are still doing 30 amps over here so this one seems to be fine as well yeah so as long as you keep the PV input at 30 amps or below these two the Renogy and the Bouge RV do just fine. All right guys, so let's tear these things apart and see what they look like on the inside. Let's open up the El Cheapo model first. Okay, that may explain why I was feeling the heat right in this area right here because I think the MOSFETs are, yeah. They're all right there. So yeah, just a very small board in here. Let's take it further apart. All right, yep, so that's it. Little USB ports there. The screen, looks like a little microcontroller, probably right about there. And then some MOSFETs. So let's open up the Bouge RV. There we go. So a bigger board. We actually got some 30 out fuses down in here. Got a nice chunky heat sink on the back. Yeah, I do see some MOSFETs here. Looks like there's more MOSFETs. Here we go. So it looks like we've got a microcontroller here. And I guess about three MOSFETs. There's three there. Oh, no, there's four. There's one hiding right here. All right. And then our heat sink. Now well, let's open up the Wanderer. There we go. And this one looks like it has these little surface mount kind of MOSFETs here. There we go. Yeah. So this little heat sink, it's not really a heat sink, it's an aluminum plate. It, it clearly does offer some heat sinking capabilities. Um, but it uses these thick thermal pads to remove the heat from this section of the board, which I'm assuming, yeah, that's where like these MOSFETs are, looks like there's some resistors here. So these heat producing components, the heat is coming from through the board and then through these thick thermal pads onto this back plate. And then there's some fuses here. All right, guys, so that's all three torn apart. The El Cheapo guy, the Bouge RV, and the Renogy. All right, guys, so I must admit that was actually a lot funner than I thought it was going to be. And I really never took the time to experiment much with PWM charge controllers. 
I'm really thinking in a future video I'd like to compare the performance of a good PWM controller like these two with a good MPPT controller and just you know see how big the difference really is between the two technologies. Alright I think that's going to be it for the video and I'll catch you in the next one.